Hi, this is Eva Venes with Pain Free for Life Summit. We are here to discuss strategies about how to eliminate chronic pain and how to overcome chronic conditions. Today I'm here with Anthony Karahais from flowingzen.com and he's here to share his strategies and tips with us of how to eliminate chronic pain. Anthony, welcome to Pain Free for Life Summit. I'm so glad that you're joining us today. Thank you, Eva. Thanks for inviting me. Anthony, would you be so kind to introduce yourself to the audience? Just tell them who you are, what you do, and what has led you to start Flowing Zen? Sure. So uh, my story begins in my 20s. Um, I was already a martial artist. I had been interested in martial arts in college. Uh, I had been interested in the violin before that, and then I switched to the martial arts in college. And what happened was I was gradually starting to fall into what I now know was clinical depression. At the time, I didn't really know what it was. Uh, but I knew there was something wrong. And at the same time, uh, coincidentally, or I thought at the time, I was starting to have quite severe low back pain. Uh, so I started to search, basically. I started to search uh, the way that I usually do, which is I read a lot of books. I'm, I'm kind of a big reader. So I read a lot of books, um, and because of my experience sort of with martial arts already, I was on that subject of martial arts, Tai Chi, Qigong, I'll talk about later, meditation, things like that. And, you know, long story short, one thing led me to another, and I eventually just started to learn uh, Tai Chi, Qigong, Kung Fu, and meditation. Um, and I, I started to practice uh, and got such amazing results really transformed my life, even once I was diagnosed with clinical depression. Um, at the time I was working in the computer industry, I was a network engineer, and I eventually just sort of decided that I had to do something else, so I quit my job. I was living in New York City. I quit my job. I moved down to Florida to join uh, an acupuncture college down here that um, I thought was good, and went to acupuncture school because of the connection between acupuncture and Qigong. And basically, to explain that, Qigong is a form of Chinese medicine and so is acupuncture. Uh, I was at acupuncture school, I started teaching, the students were interested, eventually I taught at the school itself, and one thing led to another, I actually quit acupuncture college to open up a full-time Qigong and Tai Chi studio here in Florida, and that was the beginning of Flowing Zen. And, uh, sort of haven't looked back ever. That was in 2005, basically, when I first started teaching. I opened the, the brick and mortar studio in 2008, and I've just been teaching really now all over the world uh, for the past eight years. That's, that's my story. Anthony, this is a wonderful story. I mean, given that you started out in a completely different uh, field and you've made such a, a transformation, that's amazing. Um, um, so you must see such a huge difference between um, Western and Eastern medicine since you um, dove into um, Chinese medicine. Um, what do you think the differences are? How do we look at pain in Western and in Eastern medicine and how are they treated different? Yeah, it's a huge subject. So if I have to answer it <laughs> without a couple hours of explaining, really it boils down to the difference between the Eastern um, traditional Chinese medicine approach and the Western approach is that the Western approach likes to look at pain as physical, structural. And the Eastern approach has never looked at it that way, that it's always been a combination of, yes, physical and structural, but more importantly, mental and emotional components. Uh, and they, they've never separated the two. So in the Eastern approach, uh, you know, this includes acupuncture, Chinese herbology. And what a lot of people don't know is that Qigong and arguably Tai Chi are branches of Chinese medicine. They all view pain the same way, which is that we have to look at the mental and emotional blockages if we're going to be effective at getting rid of the pain. Uh, so, for example, in Chinese medicine, the basic view of pain is that it's a form of stagnation, uh, and it's a stagnation of energy, or qi. And that stagnation can come very simply from either excess or deficiency. A simpler way of saying that, I, I can't get into too much Chinese medicine here, but a simpler way of saying that is that your pain can be caused by too much yin or too much yang. 
you know, the, the yeah. basic philosophy of yin and yang. And uh, regardless, the solution is to move the chi. And uh, one way to, well, you can move chi with acupuncture, qi gong, tai chi. Uh, but ultimately, moving the chi is also about moving the emotions or balancing. We could say, I think in the West, we would say harmonizing the emotions. So if there's pain, you got back pain like I did, low back pain, there must be stagnation. That stagnation can come from a few different things. But the solution in the end is to move the chi. And if we're going to move the chi, we have to move, we would say emotions, but it's really mental, emotional uh, components. So we have to clear mental, emotional blockages. You know, you, you have to work on the complexity of the emotions, which Chinese medicine has a nice organization for. Anthony, do you find that uh, people have a hard time understanding or accepting that emotions have an effect on the body and they have a lot to do with pain? To say that people have a hard time with it is the understatement of the year. It's, <laughs> it's an ongoing struggle. I, I blog all the time and I write about this. I have students. They're really accepting and open-minded of the the Eastern approach, even acupuncturists, people who've been to acupuncture college for four years, they have a master's degree. We, it's so deep in our psyche in the West that um, it's an uphill battle to, to, it's not just about convincing somebody, it's about getting it deep into their subconscious that this pain that you are experiencing is not just physical. So the answer is absolutely yes, that people, I, I find it to be an ongoing part of my um, my mission and my work is to explain in many different ways and over and over again why, if you're experiencing pain, that we have to also look at the mental emotional components. Anthony, how do you use Tai Chi and Qigong to eliminate pain? Also, would you explain a little bit what they are? Yeah, sure. So these days you'll hear them go together very often, Qigong and Tai Chi. I think that Tai Chi is still the more popular one, especially in the United States. Um, they're connected. There's a lot of overlap. It's not really worth explaining all of the differences right now, but they're both uh, ways of working on your internal energy, your, your vital energy, which in the Chinese tradition is called qi. Um, a simple explanation is that qigong is an umbrella term for any Chinese art that works on energy, especially for health and vitality, uh, whereas tai chi in its original form was a martial art and can still be practiced as a martial art, but it's a martial art that uses qi. So, you know, we can think of these basically as simple moving meditation exercises. And in my work, um, you know, even though these arts are becoming more popular, it, one of my big messages is that the physical aspect of these arts is the least important aspect. So it actually relates to what we were just talking about, that these are ultimately, no matter what kind of movement you're doing or if you're doing a Tai Chi movement, the important stuff happens on the inside and it's super important in terms of getting results. Um, I'm very results driven in myself and my students. So I want them to get results and if you get results, uh, we have to pay attention to more than just the movement. So I think it's fair to say that these are moving meditation arts um, with the emphasis on the meditation aspect, because that, that will give you a better idea what they should be or what we should really be focusing on in order to get the results that, certainly if we're talking about pain, do you want to get rid of your pain? Well, then we need to treat them as internal meditative arts. So basically, it's the, it's the calming, relaxation element of both of these strategies that help people um, lower their stress levels, uh, process their emotions, and finally um, come to better balance and uh, eliminate, eliminate pain, right? Yeah, that's a nice way to sum it up. In the Chinese tradition, qi, or energy, is basically a general term for a lot of different things. So, for example, if we lower cortisol levels, that's your stress hormone, uh, that's qi, really, in Chinese medicine. If we have an effect on your cortisol levels, then, yes, we're absolutely going to move qi, which matches the Eastern and Western approaches. How do we lower cortisol levels? Well, qigong and tai chi have what I consider to be a multifaceted approach. So um, you're moving, which is nice because a lot of people, I, I'm a big fan of sitting meditation, but I myself struggled with it. And it's just not, it's not the best place for everybody to start. If you're in chronic pain, for example, 
sitting still and, and sitting meditation is maybe not the best place to start. Um, so there's the movement aspect, there's the breathing aspect, there's the meditative aspect. Um, there's some visualization involved with Qigong built into the, the arts. So it's the confluence of those different aspects. You put it together in one, really it's an ancient methodology and oof, the results are just awesome. Anthony, if, if I walked into your studio and if I said, my lower back is really, really hurting me and I've been everywhere, I, I tried all kinds of practitioners, nothing has helped, mm -hmm. how, where would you start me out? What would you do with me? So that's a good question. And, uh, you know, it definitely wouldn't be the first time that happened. That's like very common experiences that people come into the studio with all kinds of pain. Also, um, the way my studio has been for years is we have a combination of uh, my wife's acupuncture clinic shares. We, we have one big, beautiful space, and then I've got sort of my side and then her side. And, uh, you know, it happens to either one of us. I'll either walk into my studio or my wife's acupuncture clinic with almost exactly that question, which is I've tried everything. I've been to the Mayo Clinic. I've seen the doctors. Um, I want to give Qigong and Tai Chi a try. Where should I start? Uh, so... The interesting thing about the way I teach is that I, I basically start everybody at the same place. Uh, there are some fundamentals that I, I've had people walk into my studio with 30 years of experience in meditative arts, even Tai Chi. I must, I've only got 25 years, so they've got more experience than me, but it's my method they're after. So in order to learn my method, which is really an inherited method, um, but in order to learn it, you have to start from scratch. You have to start with the basics. So I have a 101 workshop that I teach where I teach some of the critical things that you need to know. And then we can start to branch in different directions later. You know, if I had to, if I was going to do a TED talk or something, if I had to talk about and teach the techniques that are of the most interest to people out there in the general world, especially people with pain, um, I cover that in my 101 workshop because uh, it's the things that matter for you to get future results. So for example, I mentioned already like some of the meditative aspects and breathing and what you should pay attention to and not pay attention to and creating habits. It's something that a lot of my traditional teachers didn't mention that they just expect you to practice and if you don't practice, tough luck. But I really care about my students. I want to help them to find ways to practice. It's true. If you don't practice, you're not going to get results with these arts, but how, how do you practice in an efficient way? How do you practice in the modern world? You've got dogs and cats running around, kids. How do you fit that into a modern world? So, you know, I break all of that down into a very doable and effective, it's about a 10 to 20 minute routine, depending on how long you take. Um, that's, that's how you're going to get results in, in the 21st century, really. Yeah, Anthony, um, as you know, I'm a Pilates instructor. I have a Pilates studio. So we see pretty much the same people. Um, I see people with chronic pain as well. Um, oftentimes I hear that they think, pain is just unevitable as we age, that as we get older, we start hurting. What is your take on it? That's absolutely not the, the traditional Qigong and Tai Chi approach. And you see lots of proof in that in the, the old masters. I mean, even to this day, even in China, where ironically, a lot of Qigong and Tai Chi is, um, it, it's not the best in the world because of the cultural revolution in China. So a lot of the good Qigong and Tai Chi left Asia um, or left China in particular, but they still, they practice, they go to the Chinese parks in the, in the morning is a fascinating place. Everybody should witness it. They're practicing and they live not only to be old age, into old age, but it's amazing what they can do in their nineties. They're mobile and active and flexible and strong and their minds are sharp and it's really incredible. Um, and that's somewhat of a a paradigm shift for Westerners. You know, I, I see the same thing in my studio, which is people coming in all the time saying, uh, you know, I'm 65, I'm just old. Now, I'm, I'm 43, so it's, it's not, I'm not, you know, on the one hand, I see where they're coming from. But on the other hand, 65 is not old. That's, you know, that's on some level halfway there, depending on how you look at things. And I can absolutely tell you that if you follow a good method, uh, you can reverse that aging process. So you can, you can start to feel in your 60s, 70s, and 80s much better than you may have felt 10, 20 years ago. So it, it's really, you know, they say it's, it's almost a cliche at this point that age is just a number. It's really how you feel here and here that matters. And 
that's absolutely true in my experience. I think it's so true that the mental aspect of how old we feel is such a huge factor because, um, as you said, people say in their 60s that they old. Sometimes people say it even younger ages, in their late 30s or 40s, that, oh, I'm getting old and uh, I'm 41 and I don't feel old at all. Exactly. And I, I'm, I don't hurt anymore. And mm-hmm. um, I don't know. I just feel like I'm full of energy and I'm full of life and I definitely don't feel the aging. Terrific. Good. So um, glad to hear it. Anthony, what other solutions does Chinese medicine offer besides uh, Tai Chi and Qigong? So the, the main branches of Chinese medicine are the ones that we've heard of. So acupuncture is actually just one branch. Then Chinese herbs is technically another branch, although they're so often combined. Mm-hmm. Chinese massage is another one. There are a few others like moxibustion and cupping and then Qigong and Tai Chi. Uh, my view of Chinese medicine has changed. Uh, you know, it's, Chinese medicine is a way of looking at healing. And one of the biggest things about it is you look at the individual person. So although, for example, Pilates, which um, you know, I, I definitely have seen students benefit from cross-training, cross-training in Pilates, uh, it's definitely not historically a part of Chinese medicine. But from a Chinese medical perspective, working on core strength could absolutely be part of Chinese medicine in the sense that if that person needs it, regardless of what their diagnosis is, if they come to me with low back pain or diabetes, it doesn't matter. Um, If their structure is a problem from a Chinese medical perspective, then we don't care how we get the result, if that makes sense, which is why cross-training can actually really, as long as there's a holistic approach to it, cross-training is really great. So I, I can't answer the question of, well, what is Chinese medicine, especially since this is not just theory anymore for me and my wife. We have been Um, referring and cross-training patients and students for so many years now that we just we just use what works but it still falls under the paradigm of Chinese medicine if that makes sense somehow yeah Anthony when I look at you um, I feel balance and I feel harmony I I see the background behind you it's beautiful the colors and uh, and your face is clear and your eyes are clear and I just sense harmony when I look at you what is your secret well it's no secret that my secret is qigong and tai chi yeah uh, it really is uh, what I turn to all the time now I am a big fan of using what works so I love acupuncture I love chiropractic um, I I think I would love Pilates. I really need to give it a try. I, I just have so busy that I haven't given it a try. I love things that work, um, but if you point to one thing that I do and that I do religiously, it's Qigong and Tai Chi. I practice religiously. I practice every day without fail. Um, I struggled with that. I had to learn the habit of practicing every day, but you know, now, 20 years later, I, I've gotten a habit of it. And it's like you said, you know, it keeps me young. It makes me feel young. It makes me full of energy. Uh, it manages my depression, and anxiety, it manages my back pain better than, you know, really anything else that is out there. I don't take, I don't take any kind of Western med- medications. Um, and for my age, for, for my age 43, you know, I'm really, I feel like I'm actually getting better. I feel like at 43, I'm better than I was at 33. And I'm really looking forward, I'm kind of looking forward to 50. Everybody's scared of 50, but I'm kind of looking forward to it. I feel like it's going to be awesome. That's awesome. I love to hear that. Um, Anthony, when you practice Tai Chi and Qigong, I assume sometimes you practice outside. Do people come up to you and ask questions of what you do and if they could learn it too? Yes. Well, now I live in Florida and I live in the country, which is really nice change because I'm a city boy. I was basically uh, born and raised in New York. And uh, when I lived in New York City, which was I practiced for a decade in New York City, um, I would try to practice outside as often as possible. It's actually... Um, these arts are they really encouraged to practice outside if you can. Uh, so I practiced outside, weather permitting, in New York City for years, and I had all kinds of interesting people come up to me, uh, including police officers. <laughs> Some funny stories there for another time. Uh, now I, pra- I live in the country, so I, I practice outside as often as possible. Um, but I definitely see that problem in students where if they do practice outside, they get some interesting questions. But uh, I've solved the problem. If people come up to you while you're practicing these, t- and people want to understand what you're doing, and you don't want to start a conversation because you're basically working, you're meditating and practicing, you just tell them you're doing a stress reduction technique, and for some reason, they'll leave you alone. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny. Um, Anthony, are there any simple are there any simple tri- tips and tips that you could suggest to the audience that they incorporate into their everyday lives just to feel better, be healthier, eliminate pain? Absolutely. I, I mean, you know, I've watched this mindfulness trend sort of explode the last couple of years, uh, and what people need to first of all realize is that mindfulness is not just sitting meditation. It's an old tradition. The tradition that I'm part of, which is connected to the Zen tradition, uh, absolutely incorporates mindfulness. And mindfulness can be something like a Qigong exercise or a Tai Chi exercise. So I think mindfulness is the future of medicine. I'm so glad that it's here. When I first started teaching 10 years ago, there was not all this buzz about mindfulness. If you had told me 10 years ago that Time Magazine would put mindfulness on the front cover, I would have said, you're crazy. I didn't think we were there yet. So I encourage people to explore mindfulness in whatever area uh, makes sense to them. If it's Qigong and Tai Chi, great. I, I think that sitting meditation can be great for some people. I teach it, I love it, but maybe if you haven't connected with sitting meditation, find something else. Walking, Pilates, yoga, anything that works for you um, and connects mind and body in a way that you will actually do it, do it. Go find that thing that works for you. Find whatever it is. For me, it was Qigong and Tai Chi. Obviously, I'm a big fan. But whatever works, you know, find that thing that's going to connect because that's the, that's the problem of the 21st century is that we are lost in thought. We are disconnected. Our minds, our hearts, and our bodies are disconnected. So find a way to get those things together and recognize that mindfulness is real medicine. It's not just woo-woo medicine anymore. It's real medicine. The literature on these arts, all the various arts you pull them together, is there's a lot of stuff out there already. There's a lot of literature pointing to it. So find something that works for you, whatever it is. Yeah, about this message, what really resonates with me is when I used to take my dog on walks, I always took my cell phone with me and I made phone calls or I just took care of little things as I was walking the dog, just trying to multitask, just trying to get one more thing done, you know? And then I realized how it affects my mental state. I wasn't enjoying my walks because I was focusing on a phone call or just returning messages Um, So I started leaving my phone at home uh, before my walks and it has completely changed um, the quality of that half an hour or hour that I spend outside in nature with my dog. So Mm -hmm. I recommend it to everybody because um, if we don't have distraction, we actually turn into our bodies and we start listening to our bodies because the body sends us signals. Our body states very clearly what it needs. So we just need to give it the time, I believe, and uh, not multitask and just focus on one thing at a time. Well, that's Zen that you just mentioned. Really? (laughs) Anthony, are you working on anything new or exciting that you would like to share with our audience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, So much has changed for me in the, especially the past year, So the past 10 years, I've been focusing on teaching locally here in Florida, but also I started traveling more. I do an annual retreat in Costa Rica at this beautiful retreat center. I teach kind of all over the country, and I've taught internationally as well. Um, So more and more often, I'm being brought outside of the local environment. And because I've just had a website for many years, uh, and I, I, I think the internet is a powerful tool, I've been figuring out ways to use the internet for years and I'm really stubborn with some of this stuff. So I've taken a long time uh, to figure out how I can match my teaching style. Cause I have some very important things like interaction. I, th- I think is really important uh, that you um, interact with a, a teacher on some point. Long story short, I just recently this year launched a, um, a live online version of the same one-on-one workshop that I've been teaching in person for years. Um, And the only reason it took me so long to launch is because I'm so stubborn that I didn't look carefully enough into the technology. And finally, I started trying it. I've done a couple of these workshops. And, you know, I feel like an idiot because the the results have been so awesome. I'm I'm passionate about helping people. And um, I really feel like I'm, I should have done it sooner because I would have helped more people. Anyway, now it's up there. I'm doing, I do one for now. I think it's looking like one of those per month. It's, It's intense. It's a three-hour workshop, but uh, it's an easy workshop, honestly, and there's a lot of interaction. 
which I think is a critical part of learning what I teach, that we go back and forth and you can ask your questions, you know, for example, what do I do with the dogs or how do I do this? Um, you, do I practice yoga first? I practice Pilates, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, all of that's okay. I'll answer those questions in a live format, helps people to learn them. Uh, and then after that, you know, people can build what I give them is this very simple, straightforward routine, no nonsense. Here's what you need to practice. Here's what you need to worry about. Don't worry about all this other stuff that you might read about on the internet when it comes to Qigong and Tai Chi. Do this, measure your results, and you'll be very happy. So that's, that's very exciting for me because I'm suddenly able to help these people all over the world that I couldn't, I couldn't help them before. I was basically writing them emails or encouraging them to come to Costa Rica or come to one of my workshops. People did fly over. It's amazing. They flew all over uh, from all over the country to come take my workshop. Now you don't have to, now you can do it from home. And it's, it's 99% as effective, I think. I, I can't believe I'm saying that, but it's 99% as effective as taking it in person. That's amazing that you get to reach out to such a huge it really is amazing. population. Anthony, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I really enjoyed talking with you and I'm sure the audience loved hearing you and uh, I'm so excited that you're available, your services are available now online. I encourage everybody to go to flowingzen.com and learn more about you and what you offer. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you, Anthony. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.